thing. One of my mentors at Tullison called it the magnificent obsession, the thing that we are so inspired by that people think we're obsessed by. The ancient Greeks knew how important this telos was, and they made a whole study of it, and they called it teleology, which is the study of meaning and purpose. So the most meaningful thing, the most purposeful thing that a human being can do is fulfill that telos, that highest value. Now, our highest values are evolving. When we're zero to 10, we probably want to play. When we're 10 to 20, we probably want to socialize. For 20 to 30, we probably want to find a mate in a career path. For 30 to 40, we want to start our own business and have our own family. For 40 to 50, we probably want to have an affair with midlife crisis. I'm joking. <laughs> but we're, our values are evolving as we fulfill one, a new one emerges. Your life's journey is a summation of all of your destinies and your hierarchy of values dictates your destiny. Tell me what your values are today and I'll tell you where you're headed. As your values change, so will your destinies. But your life's journey is a summation of those destinies. So. Now here's what's interesting. Our brain is set up in layers. We have the hind brain, we got the middle brain, and we got the forebrain. Telencephalon, prosencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, and the metamyelencephalon down below. The lower femur part of the brain deals with tele telenomics. They learn through trial and error, through impulse and instinct. Impulse towards pleasure, instinct away from pain. And therefore, if we have something that's pleasurable or painful, we learn through those mechanisms. But in the forebrain, we have foresight. And anytime we set a goal that is aligned and congruent with our highest value, the top value, particularly the top, top value, the one that brings tears of inspiration to us when we think about it, our executive center, our medial prefrontal cortex, the most advanced part of the brain, comes online, gets glucose and oxygen in the blood, and it awakens, and when it comes online, it sees an inspired vision, it sees a strategy on how it can produce the outcome, it executes the outcome with precision, and it automatically has self-governance. They're literally nerve fibers down into the amygdala, shut down the amygdala and calm it down from its impulses and instincts and keeps itself under the cage around it, that animal. And allows it to come out and do something extraordinary with precision. So every time you set a goal that's aligned with your highest values, that executive center comes online. And it sees in its mind's eye its outcome. Those with a mission and vision, they flourish. Those without a mission and vision, they perish. One's the angelic, the foresight that sees the future, the messenger, messenger of the future, and the other one is basically living as the animal caged in the past. Greatness is a spontaneous emergence inside human beings that are congruent. One of the greatest tools of leadership is congruency. Setting goals that are truly congruent with what their mission is. They do not need to be reminded, they do not need to be motivated, they do not need to be incentivized, they're inspired, they do it because they love doing it. They automatically expand, and every time they do, the space and time horizons grow. They give themselves permission to set a bigger goal over a longer period of time. And once those space and time horizons get big enough to live beyond their life, they create immortal legacies. Many people live hour to hour, maybe day to day, some people week to week, some people month to month, some year to year, some decade to decade, some generation to generation, some all the way to a century, some into the millennium. The magnitude of space and time within our own innermost dominant thought determines the level of conscious evolution we've obtained. It determines where we're playing and how congruent we are. We automatically create vast goals because we're vast people deep inside. Our real authentic self is a vast person. But the second we subordinate to the world on the outside and try to live through comparisons to others and inject other expectations, we cloud the clarity of our own mission. Our telos is covered. 
and we shrink. Because we set goals that are lower on our values, the space and time horizon shrink. And we look for immediate gratification. We live day to day. And if we apply that to our wealth, we look for immediate gratification. We gamble with immediate gratification instead of long-term vision. And long-term vision pays an immediate gratification cost when it comes to economics or when it comes to real leadership. And when you set a goal that's aligned with the highest values, you embrace pain and pleasure in the pursuit of your purpose. You embrace support and challenge equally in the pursuit of purpose. You automatically, it's not a narcissistic pursuit. That one thing will be something that serves people. That one thing will be something that you love getting up and making a difference and tackling challenges and serving people with it. It'll be a nice blend of the narcissist and altruistic endeavor, but it'll be meaningful to you that you can't wait to get up in the morning and do. Then you can't wait to get up in the morning and give your service. People can't wait to get your service in business. I'm taking the content that I'm learning. How's it going to help me fulfill what is most meaningful, most inspiring, most purposeful to me, regardless of my age and whatever it is, regardless of what my parents think, regardless of what my teachers think, regardless of what society thinks, what is it that inspires me and how is this class going to help me fulfill it? If they can answer that 30 or 40 times and remodelate neuroplastically their brain, they will start to wake up their genius because they will want to learn it because it's inspiring to them. I've watched children just come out of their shells that have been told ADHD and told labels and all kind of crap. They've been told these freaking labels by people that don't care about the kids enough to honor their own values and they're projecting their authoritative autocratic values on the kids and expecting kids to fit in a box and get drawn, not a genius. Am I making sense? Pardon me for getting warmed up on that one. Everybody here has a highest value. Everybody here can live an inspired life. And whatever inspires them, regardless of what that pathway is, whether it's running marathons, or 32 marathons, which is phenomenal, and getting in the zone and feeling you're connected into the universe, or whether it's basically going to the North or South Poles and doing something that's extraordinary, whatever that inspires you and you feel communion with this divine design that's here, that's your spiritual path. And if you happen to join a particular spiritual group and culture, fabulous. But it's something bigger than that. It's bigger than human made. It's something which I call the divine master plan for life. Sir Isaac Newton wanted to study this uh, divine master plan. It wasn't limited to anybody's belief system. It wasn't an anthropomorphism. It was something transcendent to that. In the breakthrough experience, I help people get in touch with that. Because whatever that is, is more profound than any limits that human beings put on it. And so we're all spiritual beings. And when we're living by our highest values, we wake that up. Regardless of our race, creed, color, age, or sex, we wake that up. And that's built out of love. Because when you're doing what's inspiring to you, and doing what you love, and doing it with the people you love, and learning how to communicate in love, life is inspiring, and this is heaven right here on this planet. And you're grateful. I think the Pope said one time that the true heaven was grace and gratitude inside the heart for a life that's fulfilling, doing what you're here inspired to do, that you feel called to do in your life. So I believe if we live according to our highest values and live by priority and prioritize our life every day and delegate lower priority things and give ourselves permission to shine, not shrink, there's nothing stopping us from doing the extraordinary things on planet Earth. And with that, my time is up.